Raise your hand if your child needs help with multiplication fact. Stick around for another new tip on how you can help your child with multiplication. Hi, I'm Rebecca with the Parent Teacher Bridge, where you can find the ideas and resources you need to empower you to be your child's most influential teacher. Today, I'm talking about how to help your child with multiplication facts. Well, we know there are many different ways and I've even made a video about it before. I'll leave a link for that in the description below. But today I'm specifically talking about this skip counting strategy. Now, if you were to talk to me on a regular basis, <laughs> I would probably assume that you knew what I meant by skip counting. But amazingly, I've had some conversations with everyday parents who didn't know what I meant by that. So let's think about this. When you were a child, did you learn how to skip count by twos, fives, and tens? Probably yes. You might have even thought you were especially accomplished if you could skip count by hundreds, 100, 200, 300, and so on. But are you aware that children can learn how to skip count by some of the other numbers like 3, 6, 9, 12, 15, and so on, or 7, 14, 21, 28, and so on? That's right. And if your child can learn how to skip count by these other numbers, 1 through 12, for example, then your child is basically walking around with a mental multiplication chart. Now, what is a multiplication chart? Well, let's look at a picture of one. A multiplication chart is sometimes called a multiplication table. And if you notice, it goes across and down by skip counting. And if you teach your child how to line up their fingers and follow going across and follow going down, they can look up the products or the answers to different multiplication fact problems. In fact, a lot of times I will print out a multiplication chart when a child does not know all their facts. And I actually allow the child to use this to cheat. But it's not really cheating. It's just using a tool, kind of like training wheels on a bike. You're just using it for a little while. And if you use it enough, while well, you're getting enough practice, you're eventually going to learn it. Now, I recommend something that's more like a jingle. It doesn't have a lot of extra words. It just straightly skip counts. But if you can't find that, something is better than nothing, right? The old Schoolhouse Rock videos even had some of these. I remember there was a Skip Counting by Five song and a skip counting by three song. You can look these up on YouTube if you don't know what I'm talking about. If you just play these in the car for your child or put them on some device around the house and your child learns how to skip count, then they are able to answer a multiplication question even if they don't have it memorized. Now, what I'm commonly seeing in schools right now is that a child might be given homework where they must answer multiplication questions even though they don't know the facts. Well, if they don't have a multiplication chart to look that up, how are they going to get those? Let's say that a child is doing a problem like eight times three. If your child recognizes that eight times three is the same as three times eight, they can either choose to skip count by eights, if they know that song, or skip count by threes. Let's try it both ways. So if your child knows, okay, I know this skip counting by threes song and it's three times eight. So I'm going to sing the threes and I'm going to use eight fingers. So eight times three, three, six, nine, 12, 15, 18, 21, 24. The answer is 24. If my child is skip counting uh, by eights and they're able to remember that song, they won't need as many fingers. So they say eight times three or three times eight. Hmm, if I sing the eights, then I only need three fingers. Eight, 16, 24. And the answer is 24, no matter which way you do it. Now, my current third grader does not have his skip counting songs memorized all the way. So when he's given a problem like that, he's going to skip count the threes and just use eight fingers. Now, don't think that using fingers is completely bad. I know that in the past it's gotten a bad rap, but I can tell you from experience that I've seen children use their fingers, I've seen children use multiplication skip counting, and I've seen children use a multiplication chart. And all of those are superior to just guessing and getting the problem wrong and trying to rely only on memory when you really haven't memorized the fact and you're just pulling a random number out of your mind. And I have seen tutoring students do that. So 
Again, that is how multiplication skip counting works for my child. If your child has learned how to multiplication skip count, leave me a comment below and let me know where did they learn it? How did you get that idea? Did you multiplication skip count when you were growing up? Now, my oldest child is a seventh grader. The only time he would ever rely on multiplication skip counting is if he's gotten rusty on his facts and he can't remember one. But you know what? He can skip count really fast and he can get that answer quickly and he can get that answer accurately. And that's what we want in math. We want the answer to be correct and we don't want to take all day to get the answer. Now, how many of you think that you may use this strategy? Leave me a comment below. Hi parents, have you heard about my parent's guide to learning the multiplication facts? I'm gonna leave a link in the description below, but basically it's a free guide that helps you know different resources you can use to help your child finally learn their multiplication facts. Different things work for different children and you will find different ideas in this download, so check it out. Now we know that multiplication and division are related. So this multiplication skip counting strategy can also work with division. So remember our three times a equals 24 problem that I demonstrated? What if your child is given a problem like 24 divided by three? Well, they're not skip counting by 24s because they haven't learned a song or a jingle for that but they do know how to skip count by threes. So how do they do 24 divided by three? They skip count by threes and they hold their fingers up while they're doing it. They stop when they get to 24. Three, six, nine, 12, 15, 18, 21, 24. And they have eight fingers held up. So they know the answer is eight. How many of your children have started fractions? Ah, uh, I love teaching fractions but a lot of people really struggle with fractions. There are ways that you can help addition and subtraction of fractions using something like the multiplication chart that we talked about because you're going to need to reduce fractions or find fractions with common denominators and skip counting can help with that as well. Let's say that you're doing one third plus five sixths. Now, fraction pieces, you can see that the thirds are different sizes than the sixths. So you're going to need to make those the same. And you're asking yourself, can I reuse the three or the six in those denominators? I can reuse the six, so five six can stay the same, because I can change my one third into six. How do I know that? Because if I skip count by threes, I do say the number six three, six. So I know that I can use the six as my new denominator. Five, six doesn't need changed and one third can be changed into two sixths. Let's talk about reducing fractions. So let's say that you have a fraction like six over 15. A child who already knows their multiplication facts, they're going to see quickly that you can divide both the six and the 15 by a three. In other words, you're dividing this entire fraction by one whole, which is three over three. But a child who doesn't know that, they might wonder, what number is a factor of six, but is also a factor of 15? They're looking for the greatest common factor. So they might think, what number can I skip count by? And it includes a six and a 15. Three, six, nine, 12, 15. Ah, if I'm skip counting by threes, I say the six and the 15. So therefore that's my greatest common factor. So it can help in those ways too. So let's wrap this all up. Your child learns to skip count with songs. You show your child how to answer a simple multiplication fact using skip counting in their fingers. Eventually with enough practice, your child is not going to always rely on their fingers. The point of math is to get the answer consistently accurate. And you also don't want to take all day to do it. So if skip counting helps you along that way, why not try it? Now, do you have a recommendation for skip counting songs? Have you found a series that you like? Please leave a link below and let my viewers and readers know where they can find that. Remember, I respond to every email, so you can write me, Rebecca at theparentteacherbridge.com. And don't forget to like and subscribe. Remember, parents, you are your child's most influential teacher.